Welcome everyone. To this class, we have another nice exponential challenge. And the question is x to the power of x or to the power of 2 equal to x to the power of 1 all over x. What will be the possible value of x? Now, I decided to uh, bring this question because of one of the exponential equation I solved. And at the end of the day, I failed to and specify it out that uh, one of the solutions which I solve for is extraneous. And so let's look at this together and see uh, what becomes um, the result. Okay, so from here, let's put our solution and put down our question. So let's take our solution. Solution from here, we put down the question. Here we have x to the power of x or to the power of 2 equal to or x to the power of 1 all over x. Okay, now if you look at this question very well, because the basis are the same, you can swear, cancel out the basis and put the exponents. Okay, if you do that, you will get about 2 or 3 roots. But what we want to do here is easy. We want to move the terms on the right hand side of the equation to the left hand side of the equation so from here if we go by that we're going to have here x to the power of x or to the power of 2 if you move this to this side it will becomes minus x to the power of 1 all over x the right hand side we are left with 0. i want to factor out x to the power of 1 all over x so if we do that we're going to have this to be your x to the power of 1 all over x bracket if we go by the law of division if we use x to the power of 1 all over s to divide this we're going to have this to be x to the power of your x out to the power of 2 minus the power here which is 1 all over x okay then let's bring down our major minus sign so here we have minus here we're left with 1 because if we use this to divide x we be left with 1. Okay? This is our 1 here. Close bracket or equal to 0. Good. Now, if you look at this, we are having a multiplication sign here. Because here we have a dot there. So, from here, we apply the zero product law. which says that if you have your a dot b equal to 0, this is a equal to 0 or B equal to 0. So if we apply this law, then we're going to have this equal to 0, this equal to 0. So let's take our case 1. So here we have case 1. x to the power of 1 all over x equal to 0. Let's proceed on this other side. So from here, let's proceed and erase this. Good. If you are having this now, what do we do to get our x? All we need to do is to raise both sides of the equation to the power of x. Okay, so if we do that, we're going to have this to be x to the power of 1 all over x or to the power of x equal to 0 to the power of x. Easy. This, this will leave. So we are left with x equal to 0 to the power of anything will give us 0. So here we have zero. So let's take this guy as our first root. So x1 is equal to this. Now, here comes the bone of contextual. At the end of the day, we are going to substitute all our roots into our initial equation to know whether one of them or some of them will be um, extraneous or not possible. The question is, will x equal to zero satisfy this equation? If it will not, we will know at the end of the video. If it will, then you also know at the end of the video. So stay till the end of the video. Let's get the other roots. Okay, so we'll continue again. We're taking case 2 now. So we have case 2. So we have here x to the power of x r squared minus 1 all over x minus 1 equal to 0. Move this to this other side of the equation. So we have here x to the power of x or to the power of 2 
minus 1 all over x equal to positive 1. We're looking for our x. For us to get x here, what do we do? If we take log to both sides of the equation, which is log base 10, we're going to run into some trouble. So the best thing is to take uh, the ln of both sides. So if we take the natural log of both sides, then we're going to have this to be the ln, ln of x or to the power of x to the power of 2 minus 1 all over x, okay, equal to the ln of 1. Mind you, ln of 1 will give us 0, okay? And if we succumb to the law of logarithm, we move this power backward, okay? You know the law of logarithm, so we move the whole of this power backward, okay? So if we do that, then this will give us here the x squared minus 1 all over x, or in bracket, dot the ln of x equal to zero because the ln of one will give us zero so if we have this to be zero again we now have our zero product rule playing out so we equate this to zero equate this to zero now this one doesn't have much work so let's take this as our first case so let's look at case three case three from our case three let's proceed on this other side ln of x equal to 0. For us to get x here, we have to eliminate our ln and we introduce the e. So if we raise everything here, for e, we're going to have this to be e to the power of ln of x equal to e naught. Since it's ln base e, and so this we go with x. Our x left out is equal to e naught We give us 1. So from here, this is another root to our exponential equation. So let's take a case 4. Case 4, we bring down our question, which is x to the power of 2 minus 1 all over x equal to 0. Easy. All we need to do is to multiply true by x to eliminate this fraction. So if we multiply this by s, multiply this by s, multiply this side by s, we're going to have here x to the power of 3 minus 1 equal to 0. Okay. If I decide to put 3 here, yeah, it will still give us 1. And so if you look at this, according to our identity, we say that if you have a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3, this is equal to a minus b, close bracket, or into a squared there, plus a b plus b squared okay if we use this identity we apply this rule this algebraic identity to this what we have here is similar to this so this expression we want to express it in this format and so this will now imply that our x to the power of 3 minus 1 to the power of 3 is equal to is equal to your bracket open x minus 1 close bracket then we have your bracket your x squared plus x dot 1 plus 1 squared close bracket this now implies again that your x minus 1 bracket x squared plus x plus 1 equal to 0 Look at this. This will give us x minus 1 equal to 0. And at the end, it will give us positive 1, which is what we'll solve for already. So what we are consigning is this. Let's solve this other guy. This will give us a different thing. So from here, we proceed and take the last lap. So let's take case 5. Case 5. We bring down the question, which is x squared plus x plus 1 equal to 0. Now, this is a quadratic equation. And we cannot solve this using the factorization method. So, let's use the formula method. From our formula, we have our x equal to your 
minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Okay? All over 2a. What is our a? Yeah, we have our a equal to 1, b equal to 1, and c equal to 1. Let's go ahead and substitute these values into the formula. So this will now give us x is equal to minus 1 plus minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 all over 2 times 1. So if we simplify down, we're going to have this to be our minus 1 plus minus the square root of 1 because 1 squared will give us 1. Then 4 times 1 times 1 will give us 4 minus 4 all over 2. 2 times 4 is 2. We're going to have this to be our minus 1 plus minus the square root of minus 3 all over 2. According to the law of sword, your minus 1 plus minus the square root of minus 1 times root 3 all over 2. Now, remember that the square root of minus 1 is equal to our i, which is imaginary number, okay? So if we replace that with everything we have here, our expression cannot become our x. So therefore, we now have, therefore, x equal to minus 1 plus minus the square root of 3i all over 2. Now, we have two answers from here now. All right, so let's take this as our 3 and 4. Let's bring out all the four roots we'll be able to solve for our exponential equation and see if one of them will fit into it or some will not fit into it. Okay, now let's go to the beginning. Okay, these are the four possible roots we'll be able to solve from this. But let's look at the first root, which is x equal to zero. If we put x equal to zero into our um, equation, would that give us a strain of solution or what? Let's check. Here we now have here. Let's check. So check. If we have x to the power of x all to the power of 2 equals to x to the power of 1 all over x. Here we're going to have this to be 0 to the power of 0 all to the power of 2 equal to 0 to the power of 1 all over 0. If we put this in bracket, this will give us 0 to the power of 0 to the power of 2 here. So 0 to the power of anything will give us 0. Is that not so? And so this will end up giving us 0 to the power of 0. And 0 to the power of 0 is undefined, okay? But let's look at the right-hand side of the equation. 1 all over 0, at the same time, is also undefined. So, but if we are having 0 to the power of anything, all defined is anything. So, if we have 0 to the power of all defined, what will be the result of it? Because why this one is undefined is simple. It's because, yeah, if you have... Like, for instance, you have um, 6, 6 all over 2. What does this imply? It means how many times can you take 2 from 6? So we can take 2 from 6 3 times. So here now, how many times can we take 0 from 1? It's undefined. Okay, so now we are having 0 to the power of 1 all over 0. Now, if we are having 0 to the power of undefined, Will it give us zero? Yes. Now, it will give us zero. But I want you to drop your comment. So, automatically, this side will give us what? Zero. So, these guy here now, they are not the same. Okay? So, this solution here, automatically, is a strenuous. So, this is a strenuous. But at the same time, the reason why I brought this question so that I get a reaction from uh, the best brain professors in mathematics, okay, all over the world. Let me see your reaction with regards to this expression we have here now, okay? I want to uh, hear from 
you with regards to what I have in Yena. I, I want you to also uh, leave a comment in the comment section below, okay? Just drop a comment there. Let me see your view. Let me hear your view uh, with regards to uh, this particular solution, okay? Now, this is All I Must TV and my name is Jix Anemo. Because in the beginning, I said it in my intro that here yeah, we are here to strike a win-win balance, okay? A win-win situation whereby you learn from us and we also learn from you in turn. We appreciate your comments so far, okay? They are so encouraging and we have learned a lot from your comments, okay? Remember, I love you so much and every one of us at Online Mass TV love you so much. If you've not subscribed, consider subscribing. Bye for now.